Thank you very much, and I want to thank the Fargo Chamber, uh, Senator Hoven, and, and certainly Scott Hannon for allowing us to put this panel together today and, and for putting this event on. It's, the Bakken attracts a lot of interest, not just in North Dakota, but across the nation and across the world. And uh, we have seen that certainly rise over the past five or six years, and it continues today. Uh, we, have, we have held about 28 town hall meetings across western North Dakota. Uh, my team of uh, Lynn and Kathy here and I have, have uh, found it amazing. Everywhere we go, people want to understand the Bakken. They want to understand the opportunities. They want to understand the technology. Uh, and also want to talk about the challenges and the impacts and all of the things that come along with it. But uh, we recently, we've started a, what we call our Bach and Rocks Cook Fest. This is our third year of doing it. Uh, two weeks ago, we were in Crosby, North Dakota. We had 1,000 people attend our big community barbecue and education session in Crosby. And let me tell you, if you get 1,000 people to Crosby, North Dakota, they want to want to come. Because <laughs> if you get the Bowbills, you're not to Crosby. And if you get to Williston, you've got a long ways to go to Crosby. But... Uh, two nights later, we headed in Watford City. We had 3,000 people attend our, our event in Watford City, North Dakota. So that was that was really uh, we were we were just absolutely amazed at the crowds that we have at these events, and we're glad to be here in Fargo. Uh, we have assembled what I think is the best of the best panel today, and uh, I'm, I'm going to turn it over to them and let them s simply provide you the facts on what what's going on with the Bakken and how it works. There are too many issues to discuss in an hour. Uh, we're going to focus today on, on really the, the basics of the Bakken, the, the, the opportunities that are presented by the Bakken, and why this resource is attracting the amount of capital and creating the opportunities and the jobs and the wealth uh, and the great budget surpluses for the state of North Dakota. We could be here and we could talk about the, the challenges and the impacts and, and all of those things for another day in and of itself. Uh, those things are all real. We're engaged in them every day, and uh, it's certainly... Uh, prosperity doesn't come without change, and change doesn't come with economic development all tightly bundled and uh, everything be perfect at it. We can't tell who we want in at the border and who we don't want into the state, but uh, those things all come, and those are challenges that we're all going to address. But uh, I'd like to introduce Kathy Nessett. Kath Kathy is, is certainly the best geologist in the Bakken. She's potentially the best geologist in, in America, and I think today she's the best geologist in the world. Uh, <laughs> She, she, she went from a one-person She went from a one-person business in 2000. Today she's got 175 employees in Tioga, North Dakota. That's not untypical. Please welcome Kat. Well, thank you very much, Ron, and wow. I certainly hope I can le uh, live up to that introduction. <laughs> well, let me get started here. I have a couple props I want to use along here. Like Ron said, I'm located in Tioga, North Dakota. I consider myself one of the luckiest people in the world. I came from New Jersey, and I was talking with uh, my table in the back of the room, the XL Energy people. For a girl coming out of New Jersey to land with a geology degree and be living in Tioga, North Dakota, in one of the hottest oil plays in the world is nothing short of a blessing from God, a miracle. And I'm very proud of that. I'm, I'm lucky where I am. What I'd like to do today is I'd like to show a little bit about the geology. I'm going to go a little bit into the drilling. And how does this all work? I'm going to start with. This is the depositional basin going from the east part of North Dakota over to the west. And it truly is a basin. It is a basin that has sedimentary deposits that have built up over the hundreds of millions of years to form this Bakken Three Forks geology that works. Back in 2000, it was in April of 2008, the U.S. Geological Survey came out with a study that really put North Dakota on the map. And the headline in Tioga's paper was 4 billion barrels. And they were talking about recoverable oil. And that is, this was the map that came out with it. This shows the assessment units and where the different areas of the Bakken are. Um, our U.S. Senator Hoven has now prompted the USGS, to, or U.S. Geological Survey, to go back and revisit this and include the Three Forks and Sanish formations into this study. And what this does is this helps us 
uh, prepare and plan for more um, impact of this oil drilling as we're going to get into it. Where's the Bakken present? Bakken and Three Forks? That's primarily in the western um, part of North Dakota, as you know. This is a map, um, or actually the uh, North Dakota stratigraphic column. And the point I want to make here is where is the Bakken located in this sequence of rocks? Let me get back a second. Um, we have our surface formations all the way up at the top. All the way down here, about 10,000 feet down, is where the Bakken and Three Forks are. The Bakken and Three Forks formation were laying down about 360 to 370 million years ago. So that is the time it has taken for these formations to, over time, to um, the heat, the temperatures and the pressure and the thermal maturity of these rocks has created the Bakken Formation. While I have this stratigraphic column up, and I know that Lynn's going to talk a little bit more about the fracking, I just want to put in perspective where, the, where our surface water aquifers are. And if you look at this strat column, way up at the top in that yellow is where our surface waters are. In the top 2,000 feet are where our wells are drilled. We are drilling in the Bakken down at about 10,000 feet of TVD, or true vertical depth. So if you think about that, you have your surface aquifers up above 2,000 feet. We drill that with fresh water. No additives, fresh water drill. We set a string of casing, cement it, and we isolate those uphole formations. Those water zones are now secure and protected from the west, rest of the drilling process. And it's very important that we understand that as we talk about this fracking um, that Ms. Campbell talked about earlier in her talk. I'm a farmer. I'm lucky to be a geologist, but I'm also a farmer. When I came to North Dakota, I fell in love and married a guy who had a homestead there in Tioga. So that is what part has kept me here in Tioga and in North Dakota. And I will tell you that farmers and ranchers, and I believe oil men, are very good stewards of this land. And what I want you to know is that I'm as concerned about my water well as the next farmer and the next rancher is. So it's very important that we as an industry take care of our, our, our resources. And I am absolutely, absolutely certain that we are doing everything to do that. Now let me get onto the geology a little bit. When we talk about the Bakken formation, this is down a blow up of that zone at 10,000 feet of true vertical depth. We have the lodgepole formation followed by the Bakken. Now within the Bakken formation, we have the upper Bakken. And I know that you can't see these core pieces, but I'd be happy to share them with you later if you'd like to see them. This is the Bakken shale. It's a black, carbonaceous, oil-rich shale. And this is where the oil is generated. The middle Bakken is just absolutely incredible, and it looks like this. And even though you can't see it, I assure you that you would look at this rock and you would say there is no way you could get oil out of that rock. This is pretty solid. This is what we refer to as an unconventional reservoir. That means it has low porosity, low permeability. Porosity are the holes. Permeability is the connectivity of those holes. So when those two things are low, it is an unconventional reservoir. As we go down through the section, we have the lower Bakken shale. Once again, a black oil-bearing shale. This is the source. This is where the oil is generated in these, two sh in these two shale layers. In between is the middle Bakken, which is a sandstone, limestone, dolomite, varying lithology. Below that, we get down into the Sanish Formation. Once again, a rock that you will look at, and I'll be happy to show them to you later, that you would swear you could never get oil out of. And without the fracking, we could not. We truly do have to crack this rock open and fracture stimulate it to make this whole play work. Within the Middle Bakken, we have a special spot where we like to drill. Companies do different things. Marathon has their plan. Whiting has their plan. Samson has their plan. All these different companies. Hess has a plan. But generally speaking, there's a preferable place within the middle Bakken. And that place is what we call the L3 zone. 
And what's happened is we have a cleanup in the gamma signature, and the gamma tool is a tool that m measures radioactivity of these rocks. So by taking these gamma readings, we use that along with analyzing drill cuttings by telling how fast they're drilling and what the gas readings are as they are circulated to the surface. We then analyze and determine where we are in zone. Within this lithophases, Typically, we like to be in this lithophases three, which is called the clean zone. And what that is, is that's a place where there are less clays, less argillaceous material, and the rock is a little bit more receptive to the fracking process. 